What's up, y'all? I Feigl with Flow Talks out here running in Chicago. Another cool day. 50 degrees. It's hard to dress for runs. Feeling a little winded today. tightness in my breathing. I've got a fever. I've been sweating all day. No, I'm kidding. I don't have a fever. I am sweating, but I've been running for 20 minutes already, so that might explain that. And it could just be a little off day for me with running. Fifth, fifth run this week. Probably take the next few days off. Anyways, I feel like I had a pretty good discussion yesterday. I had some okay points on what's happening with uh, the relationship between our favorite interviewee and interviewer on new thinking aloud. Respectively, Dr. Jason Reza Zorzani and Dr. Mishlove being the host of New Thinking Aloud. Anyways, it's unfortunate. I think Zorzani probably took great offense to what Mishlove said in his video. And I presume there might be a fallout, but I hope there will not be. here by North Park University. A Christian, Christian university, private Christian university here on the northwest side of Chicago. But, I had some more thoughts. A few episodes ago, talked about wanting to uh, address some of the fundamental characteristics of the somewhat binary and fundamental characteristics of, of human character, of humanity, and how these two forces um, have really pushed us into our modern world and pushed us into confronting each one deeper and deeper. And we have a lot of people, I feel like a lot of these characteristics take shape in our politics and in our ideologies with communism represent, representing one side and Capitalism, democratic capitalism, or just straight up capitalism represents the other side, the other characteristic. Two poles pulling and pushing on human, the human will and creativity, forcing our way through history. Those characteristics can be named being uh, being altruism and I guess for lack of a better term autonomy because I mean each individual in the whole history of civilization and even before civilization Individuals were individuals who were who had autonomous thoughts all of their own. Yet, dating back to throughout the history of civilization and before civilization, there is also altruism. The collective, the gregarious, the uh, 
the congregatory characteristic of humanity. We all have a, a need and a tendency to look out for ourselves, but we can only look out for ourselves by collectivizing, by coming together, working together, making agreements, shaking hands, the art of the deal. But the art of the deal isn't one way, it can't be. It can't be someone who thinks strictly about their own autonomy and liberty and choice without thinking of the collective. And I believe this, this sort of creates stemming from those two concepts of, I mean, we need both. We need to cooperate and we need to express ourselves individually. So it's a collective expression of it, individuals at all times in which all people have equal say of what they want to say to everyone else. But through various institutional systems and ideologies and economics and markets and everything much beyond my understanding, we create, we create deals and deals on top of those deals in which the layers of culture and the layers of mutual understanding become so built up and confused and conflated that we, we find ourselves in systems which keep us down from our true expression. I'm not sure. I had this, I feel like I had this all worked out much better before. But it also comes down to, you know, a lot of uh, Nietzsche's thoughts with the concept of the ubermensch, the superman, and his uh, crusade against the Christian, the Christian ethic, the uh, characteristics of meekness, which I would equate to what we've been talking about, to altruism and the collective spirit. Meekness being that, you know, we understand we are not the center of it all, but we are a part of all of it together. And we are thankful and meek and appreciative of not only our position, but our ability. I want to give it back. I want to give, use that, that ability for something good. And with Nietzsche's rejection of meekness and, or I guess conceived rejection of meekness, and the power of will, and that being conflated with violence and other superiority complexes that have permeated through not only German culture, but Western culture, which have influenced the rise of fascism, and they're very dangerous thoughts. Just like Giorgiani's thoughts are very dangerous as well. But danger does not mean they should be prohibited. I mean, they just need to be questioned more and in the discussion more because we can't have all will to power individually. It can't be everyone all willing themselves to power with no thoughts of the collective. It has to be a combination of both, a balance of both, of being meek and being passive and allowing others to express themselves in opposition to you without your complete 
without a, uh, a hostile attack retribution coming back from you. We need to be individuals and we need to feed our egos to an extent, but as I've heard Dr. Mishlov talk about Nietzsche and his, his catatonic psychosis in his last years of his life with conversations of, uh, I think it was with Adam Crabtree. Nietzsche was unable to bring love into his philosophy. It was all will and domination and evolution looking outward. Without an inward evolution as well, I guess. And it sort of reminds me of a uh, a lot of Ken Wilber's thoughts in, on his integral theory, theory. And let's, you know, all of these cultural layers, everything, all of reality is built on holons of parts consisting of whole parts, magnifying, containing, and elevating the old construction. Using the, an integral theory to approach these types of problems holistically with the, with the four quadrants as the, the outward me, the inward me, the outward we, the inward we, being we have the collective, the collective and the individual, the interior and the exterior. And each of those, you see it as a grid, four quadrants, you can map certain problems out or look at what might be a holistic, what might be the holistic problem and what could be the holistic solution. Seeing how every, all four of those quadrants need to be integrated. The collective, we, interior and out, exterior, you know, the collective consciousness, and then the collective infrastructure as two of the quadrants, and the other two quadrants being the individual representing the interior of the individual. The psyche, the mind, and the exterior of the body, the, the body. So, there are, and that's what is lacking if we look at Nietzsche's thought. He's all the exterior well, I guess, no, he's all the individual side of it. Individual evolution, the Superman. But I guess he looked at culture, too. And he refused the collective form of culture. Seeing it. I don't know. I'm getting quite lost in it. If you guys want to talk about it, hit me up in the comments. Because I do feel like there is something missing in the brilliance of Nietzsche's thought. And I'm not quite sure if it is his total rejection I mean, I guess he might have been skewed throughout the years and how his philosophy has been interpreted and how it's been used as propaganda.
But I think Adam Crabtree was saying, Oh, I just about had it. That in Nietzsche's view, God was dead. Love being represented by God was dead. But there was an evolution occurring, a growth of humanity, a growth of history, a growth of technology, and which had a trajectory. Yet there was no there was no design, there was no will behind that. It was strictly chaotic evolution. And the only way to control it was in the individual grasping himself and becoming the Superman. Speaking as Zarathustra spoke. It smells like weed. Oh, this skunk. A real skunk. So, I do think that was it, because despite Nietzsche's declaration of a dead god, we still were he is correct that we each individually contain a god and we are the gods and our will is our will through love is the correct evolutionary path the loving expression of ourselves is the path that will create a collectivized yet appropriately individualized society because we need to love ourselves but we not only need to love ourselves but we need to love everyone else and let them be loved and let them love so that is the that is the trajectory, that is the will. Love is the will. And that's when it comes to passivity and subscribing to pacifism is the love is supreme. And it can be attained and it can be given and we can't control others and hopefully we can give them love before they and love and help them before they hurt others I guess so yes we we all already are the Superman we need to be the super collective it's easy for us to individuate we all occupy our own individual platonic caves every night believe in the shadows on the wall so What we need to do is we need to learn to love each other again in this most divisive of times. We need to let each other think. We need to let each other decide. And the correct path is always not through force but acceptance and a questioning of assumptions. on any side and a willingness to change and the ability to remain flexible psychologically and physically 
our bodies calcifying and accumulating decades and decades of pain and stiffness. Same thing happens with our psyche. Because remaining flexible is the only goal to let our light and other people's light shine in the most difficult of situations. Anyways, I'd like to think more about how altruism and, you know, it's like the contradiction between us having what Richard Dawkins calls the selfish gene. There's a heron. There it goes. Doesn't look that big on camera, but it looks pretty big in real life. But yeah, the distinction between two binary polar characteristics of humanity, of possibly the universe manifest through humanity as well, as above, so below. But the need to be of everything and also the need to be of ourselves. Two needs that need to be balanced and represented in not only ourselves, but in our collective culture. Anyways, I hope any of this makes sense. Just flow talks, just fucking flowing, just fucking words, salad, just poetic vomit, snotty sonnet. Anyways. See you guys later. Flow Talks 2020. Year long 420. Hit the subscribe button. Let me know what you think in the comments. I'd love to discuss these matters further. So you can hit me up on Twitter. I underscore F-E-I-G-L-E on Twitter. I Feigl. Peace out. Flow Talks. <laughs>